uh, welcome to the uh, VZBI community day. Um, but, uh, before we begin uh, today's session, so I just wanted to shortly mention the topic that has been on our minds uh, for the last month. Uh, so we are, our company is from Latvia, we are share the common history with Ukraine. We uh, regained independence uh, 30 years ago from the Soviet Union. And if we wouldn't do that, so there wouldn't be any EZBI. And um, so therefore we um, currently, we stand with Ukraine for their fight for independence. And we condemned uh, Russia's war against Ukraine. And we help with donations with, uh, uh, we help with our voluntary work. Uh, to them, and I encourage everyone to help Ukraine as you can. Um, so, uh, ECBI Community Days, we started uh, it uh, uh, already five years ago, and we did our first Community Days in uh, Riga, and uh, then uh, uh, three years ago, so we did uh, it in Las Vegas, uh, and uh, then, as all of us, we went online and the last two community days were uh, remote. And this time, uh, so we thank you for all of you who were able to come to Las Vegas. And it is really much better to speak to the live audience. And, uh, but as uh, not everyone could come, so therefore we organized uh, this also as a remote event. And as you see, it is a little bit technically challenging so to do it both online and uh, uh, on site, but um, I hope that you will enjoy the content of it. Uh, so let me introduce the agenda for today. Uh, so I'm starting with opening and uh, I will tell you more about the latest features, uh, some upcoming features. And after that, uh, uh, Garda will continue with different tips and tricks about these latest new features. And the times uh, in our uh, agenda are in local Las Vegas Pacific uh, daylight time. So please adjust to your time zone who are watching this online. And uh, after uh, that, uh, uh, Janis uh, will talk about statistical insights from one click solutions to advanced calculations. After that, we'll have some break. And uh, then we will have a guest speaker, Fabian. So thank you for joining us. And we'll tell his experience about project portfolio management uh, reporting in EZBI. Uh, after uh, that, so there will be some uh, pause that will not do the live stream of that. Uh, we'll have a, a time slot for lightning talks, short uh, lightning talks where some of our colleagues have prepared uh, some uh, things that they wanted to share with others. But uh, during that time, so we encourage everyone of uh, you who are here. So if you want to share something, tell something others, uh, so this will be uh, just locally here, so it will not be live streamed. So you are welcome to take this opportunity. And after that, so there will be a lunch break uh, for those who are here in Las Vegas. Uh, and then we will uh, start back with an uh, online uh, translation after that. And uh, uh, my colleague Diana will tell about uh, EZBI at scale how to manage EZBI in large scale Jira instances. And uh, I will also tell about the largest uh, EZBI instance in the world, which is our cloud. Uh, and then uh, uh, as some of you probably know that we have a lot of Yanises. Uh, so today it's, here are three of them. So the Yanis Baja will tell about uh, how to use the, usage statistics, so you can analyze EZBI with EZBI. Then uh, Ilza will uh, tell about NDX, but so typically you think about NDX something complex uh, calculations, but she'll try to explain how you can do NDX the easy way, uh, how to build your uh, 
uh, MDX calculations gradually. Then there will be another break. And the final presentations will be by Zane, how to filter data, how to translate JQLs to EZBI. And uh, finally, oh, so interesting topic. Uh, so our third, Janis will tell about how to lie with the reports. So uh, tips to improve your data literacy. So probably why should be in quotes, but maybe not. So it's sometimes uh, maybe uh, you can use uh, 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 um, use ECB also to tell some beautiful lines and with some data. Okay, uh, during uh, uh, the uh, presentations or after the presentations, the uh, uh, audience here will be able to uh, ask us live questions. So those who are watching us remotely, please use the uh, Zoom questions and answers uh, section and We'll try to answer them later uh, and write the responses there. As well as uh, we uh, opened uh, the Slack channel for general discussions, which was open last year. So but this time, so we don't promise that we will be able to answer any questions there right now. But if you just want to chat with uh, others, uh, please use that opportunity. But for everyone here uh, in Las Vegas, so uh, please use all the breaks uh, as an opportunity to discuss your specific cases, uh, your specific uh, questions. Please uh, grab anyone from us and uh, ask uh, your questions. And we have also a uh, room uh, next to here where you can sit down and discuss your specific use cases if you want to show something to us and ask for help. So please use this opportunity. We are here for you today. And after uh, the event, uh, I uh, wanted to remind that we have community uh, discussions uh, site, uh, communityezbi.com, where you can always ask questions, share your experience, and this is a very active uh, community forum site where both we, as well as other community members uh, are answering uh, questions every day. Uh, short updates about our team. Uh, so now in total, uh, we are five by five, 25. Uh, some uh, recent updates is that, uh, so those who have uh, worked with us in support, uh, uh, for a long time. Uh, now, one of our first uh, support uh, uh, ladies, Lauma and uh, Dinah, the recent uh, change is that uh, they are now moving to the development. So, so they wanted uh, to uh, do uh, improve all the things by themselves. That's yeah, so what uh, uh, customers were telling. And so, so they, uh, they will be now less in uh, support, but still from time to time also answering some questions there. Uh, uh, but now moving to the development role. And uh, recently we have two new uh, uh, guys in the support, Oscars and Mauris. So, so you will see them more in uh, your support emails when you are writing to us. Um, uh, another update uh, about EZBI. So we told last year, so we had a celebration. We had a 10 year uh, birthday. Uh, so then naturally this year, so EZBI goes up to 11. So, and so when EZBI was great at 10, so now it will be even better at 11. And uh, also we are uh, happy that uh, uh, EZBI was uh, awarded Atlassian Partner Award uh, this year. And uh, two days ago, Atlassian uh, announced that we got the Mission Critical App Award. Uh, and th this was because of our long history of uh, during these 10 years uh, supporting uh, uh, customers and uh, providing mission critical business intelligence data. Uh, and uh, so we 
supported you wherever you are, either if you're using server or data center, or if you are moving to the cloud. And especially, so we have uh, invested a lot in our cloud and helping customers to move to the cloud and uh, received the, uh, improving our cloud platform and uh, implementing all the requirements that uh, Atlassian uh, has done. And for all these years, we have been in top 10 uh, Jira app, uh, third party uh, app listing, and we are still continue to be there. And thank you all the customers for uh, being with us and helping us to uh, achieve this award. So now that I have uh, given you the overview of some latest uh, uh, updates, uh, so let's move to the uh, latest features, upcoming features section, where I will give you a quick update what has been already released, what is uh, recently released, what are we planning to do next. And then you will see also the details about that in upcoming presentations. Uh, as always, I wanted to remind that all the released uh, new features, uh, uh, we frequently update our change log in the documentation. And uh, please always go there and visit when we uh, release some new versions uh, and uh, see the links to the updated documentation pages. So uh, if I start with the latest uh, uh, server and data center uh, release, which was uh, released uh, uh, last year, uh, it was the EasyBI version 6.4. Just to remind uh, some latest features what were there. It was uh, conditional formatting in charts, uh, separate uh, save buttons, uh, saving of improving the saving copy of sample reports, uh, converting report specific measures to user defined measures, uh, new sprint and issue type hierarchies, and uh, custom hierarchies in general, custom field dimensions. Let me just quickly show some examples, screenshots about that. Uh, so, the first is a conditional formatting in charts. So, as you know and probably have used uh, for some while, we had a custom, uh, we had conditional formatting in tables, and we improved that. Now we moved all that functionality to uh, charts as well. So here's a quick demo video about that, uh, that uh, you could do some uh, conditional chart formatting in tables. Now you can do exactly the same in charts. For example, if you would like to highlight some top three values in a bar chart, and it uh, uh, easily could be done. Uh, so then the next, uh, what I uh, mentioned that uh, small improvement of separating save and save as buttons, that was the functionality which sometimes was confusing, that save was actually always open in save as dialogue and, uh, and it was not clear so whether you are renaming or saving as a new report. So now we uh, separated the, these buttons as save and save as as well as it's dynamically is changing. So if you have changed some report, then the save button will be enabled. So you see that there are some changes which you uh, should save if needed or discard if not needed. And then if you want to make a copy of some report, there is a separate save as button. And especially you can use that in uh, when opening uh, sample reports so to avoid confusion. Uh, we uh, when you open the sample reports that we create, we don't allow to change that and uh, save the changes uh, so that you could always see that uh, this is the sample provided by us and uh, there are no other changes. But if you like that sample report, you can always use the save as button to create your own uh, copy of that and uh, modify according to your needs. Um, so the next is uh, uh, converting report specific measures to user defined measures. So, uh, this uh, uh, report specific measures were already introduced some while ago uh, that if you need some calculation just in one report. And then we introduce this functionality that if you previously created some shared user defined measure, that was needed only in one report, you can convert it to that report specific measure. 
So now we have added this uh, capability to do it uh, vice versa and move report specific measure as a shared user defined measure. So the typical use case would be that maybe you want to test out some new calculation, you can create it as a report specific measure in just one report. And if you see that this calculation might be useful in many different reports, you can convert it to the user defined shared measure. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, this link uh, for converting to shared uh, user defined measures. Uh, then uh, yeah, I mentioned that we introduced some new uh, hierarchies for sprint dimension, for issue type dimension, uh, that uh, in sprint uh, uh, dimension there is hierarchy by sprint status, and uh, as well as an issue type uh, dimension, so there is new hierarchy by type. So the name is a little bit confusing that there's issue type, type, yeah, but which means that uh, you can group together all standard issue types and all standard uh, issue subtasks, as sometimes you want uh, to aggregate then uh, all the different subtask types or all the parent issue types together. So now it's easier. Okay, uh, so this was a short recap of the uh, latest features in the already released uh, server and data center ECBI versions. Now, if we move to the latest features in cloud, uh, and I wanted to, uh, to tell uh, that our approach uh, recently is that we uh, develop and release all the new features in cloud first. And we test it uh, there with some specific use cases. So we contact and uh, give access to and ask some customers to give the feedback about that feature. And uh, that, this helps us to, to improve, finalize it. And then when uh, later all the new features in cloud are also packaged and released in the server and data center versions as we are still one of the few apps uh, that share the same code base, uh, both for the cloud and server and data center. And it is the same application, uh, either deployed to the cloud or packaged as a server and data center um, plugin uh, app. And so uh, now I will tell about several new features which are already available in the cloud that will be available in the upcoming uh, version 6.5 for server and data center. So we hope that in a, in a month yeah, we might finalize this uh, new version 6.5. So the first is a, a non-empty page selection feature. And the use case for that is that uh, when you have several uh, dimensions and pages, uh, previously, they were kind of independent, so you select uh, them as a filter, for example, project as a filter or issue type as a filter. But uh, quite often, uh, you would like to have that this filter is dependent on the previous selection. And for example, uh, if we have projects and issue types, then some projects have one issue type, some projects have not, uh, different issue types. Now you can build uh, uh, the same one report where you can put uh, project and issue type selection in pages, but uh, uh, use this non-empty uh, page selection option. And now when you will select the software project and you will see the uh, available values for issue types, you will see just the software project specific issue types like bugs, features, tasks, etc. But if in the same uh, report, if we change the selection to service desk project, then in the uh, list of available uh, issue types, you'll see just service project uh, issue types like incident, service request, etc. So this is available both in the uh, report selection uh, in uh, reports as well as in dashboards. Uh, in addition to dashboards, we uh, introduced uh, a better feature for editing dashboard common pages. 
as you know that uh, in uh, uh, dashboards you can previously you could uh, pick that uh, from some report i want this uh, page dimension to be shared page dimension so that if you change it uh, all the reports using that dimension will use that selection but sometimes uh, it was uh, hard to modify what is available in these shared page uh, selections for the dashboard so now it's easier that uh, so there is a separate uh, uh, when you edit the dashboard you can see all these page dimensions and from there in the same way as you can could edit what are the available selections uh, in reports, in the same way, you can now uh, edit them in the dashboard, change the sequence, delete something. So, uh, much uh, better improved um, experience there. Um, so, the next uh, feature is uh, about uh, uh, improved analysis of uh, Jira issue cycles. Um, this is, uh, has been uh, quite often uh, requested uh, feature uh, and quite often we suggest that we need to do complex calculations, how to analyze issue cycles. So what uh, we call by issue cycles in uh, this case, that this is just a list of statuses. For example, we define development cycle, which in our case is the, uh, we include their statuses like in this example selected for development in progress and uh, resolve so i would like uh, to call this as a uh, development cycle and whenever issue moves to any to this uh, of these statuses we start this cycle when it moves out uh, from any of these statuses we stop the cycle and we would like to check so how many for how many issues so this cycle was started or how many it was ended uh, and what was the time spent into all of uh, total time spent into these statuses. Now, in, when importing uh, JIR issues, you can easily uh, define uh, these issue cycles and uh, import. And after that, you will have the standard measures automatically created by, in this case, so issues development started. Uh, how many, for how many issues development was ended, what was average days spent in a development cycle, and what is the total count of uh, issues currently uh, in this development cycle after the, at the end of a particular time period. So this now makes a uh, much easier and without any custom calculations uh, analysis of these issue cycles. Now, uh, uh, the next is again about uh, improving improvements in user interface, uh, as well as in some way also improvement in uh, performance of your EZBI installation. As uh, quite many, what we have uh, quite often, as we have learned, um, you are, yeah, customers are putting a lot of uh, reports uh, in dashboards because uh, so that's an easier way to for users to find and sometimes they just need this one report and then it's easier that we either put in ECBI dashboards or we, we put in uh, Jira dashboards some reports or ECBI dashboards so that people could find it but uh, especially regarding Jira dashboards so it's opened by default quite many times and people are actually not looking at these reports and this is just running uh, these reports in the background and taking some space uh, and uh, probably it's not needed and uh, so therefore we created a simple solution for that that you can uh, uh, save uh, either um, uh, in easy dashboards reports in a collapsed mode or you can also publish them on Jira dashboards in collapsed mode and uh, when, uh, so they will be there, but no uh, reports will be executed. And so it will uh, reduce the load on your uh, Jira or uh, ESBI installation. And when you need, when you expand it, so then on the first expansion, so it executes all the reports and uh, shows the results. So it will be uh, easy to find for users these reports, but uh, will take less screen space as well as uh, improve, uh, uh, reduce that. 
load of the DZBI. So the next several ones are uh, regarding uh, uh, performance improvements. And as performance is also one of the features uh, so that uh, we pay attention to and all the time we think about how to improve the impro improve the performance as uh, uh, if uh, reports are executing too long, then people will use them less and uh, create more frustration. And uh, we uh, constantly look at what, what are these typical performance problems and how we could uh, improve it. And one of the things uh, was that uh, uh, what we were discouraging the users uh, to do multiple page selections in many dimensions, as uh, for example, if you have some four or five uh, dimensions, and they, uh, previously, if you started to pick several values from one dimension, several from other, several from other, in uh, easy BI, so that created uh, all, uh, it cre uh, calculated all the possible combinations of these values and then did the uh, aggregation, and it uh, became uh, slower and slower. So this has uh, now been uh, significantly improved, and uh, so now you can much safer to do multiple page selections in these multiple di dimensions, and the result uh, is performed uh, much faster, and it's safer to do. And so, you know, if you are already in the cloud or on the next upcoming uh, version 6.5, so you will need to remove that's our recommendation that we discouraged uh, doing that. So that should be uh, much faster now. Also, uh, the performance of uh, drill through issue is improved, especially when you were doing these multiple page selections. Now, if you do the drill through the issues uh, in all the typical scenarios, you will get re results much faster. The next is the uh, so, uh, performance improvement of standard calculations, especially if you use a lot of uh, data points in rows or a lot of uh, data uh, in charts. Um, like here is an example that I am looking at some daily chart of uh, issues created. And now the standard calculations like uh, adding the average or maximum is uh, much uh, faster and uh, as well as for adding cumulative total, it will perform much faster. Previously, these standard calculations needed to recalculate on every data point uh, these values. So now we are to improve that we are caching the uh, created values. And as a result, especially if you have a long list of values, these standard calculations will perform much faster. And under it, so if you want to do some advanced things, you will be able to look at the generated MDX formulas for the standard calculations, and you will see that there are some new uh, MDX functions which help with these uh, performance improvements. That there is some, if you need to pre calculate something just once uh, for the report, you can wrap it in constant value. Uh, function and so it will not be recalculated in all the places where you are doing that. For example, sometimes we need to find for the selected springs or spring start date or, or something else. So it should be constant uh, and calculated just once for the report. As well as so there are new MDX functions for previous value, previous row value. Quite often, yeah, if you have some long list of uh, rows and then uh, you want to see that. In the previous row, there was this value, and you want maybe to calculate some difference, and it's easy. You can reference that in this row, I want to take the previous row, take the value of current row value, and then do some calculations, for example, that will change something like that. Uh, there are some now improved new cumulative sum function, which is used in our of this uh, uh, cumulative uh, sum uh, standard uh, calculation, which you can use in our your calculations as well. Uh, as well as some other you know, functions like uh, calculating day difference in work hours where you can define so that you exclude your Saturdays and Sundays or whatever your uh, holidays are and uh, for doing uh, calculations just of these uh, hours uh, during your defined working time. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, uh, finally, so which is probably more used by us, we the, the profiling uh, a function uh, which you can use in your sort of custom calculations to get the total time spent in some calculation. And when you are doing the uh, performance investigation, it's easier to find out so whether this custom MDX uh, code uh, what uh, what is the time spent in uh, this calculation and whether it is significant for the total report execution time. Now, uh, moving to some other new features. Uh, uh, this is about um, uh, uh, integrations, and we improved our tempo timesheets uh, integration. And in tempo, you can define your workload schemas. And from that, we can import the uh, tempo required hours. And uh, uh, there is a checkbox so if you are using tempo, you can check that and you will get the uh, new um, uh, measure uh, of tempo required hours. Um, so all these features are, are already in the cloud and will be in the upcoming server version. So there are several uh, cloud specific latest features. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, one is uh, about new cloud integrations. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, that we typically release all the new features at first in cloud and then later in server. But there still was were some features which were not available on the cloud. And one of them was in integration with the uh, Jira Service Management Insight. Uh, for asset management, so now it is available in the cloud as well, and uh, you can uh, analyze inside data in the cloud. Uh, as well as we did the improvements uh, with X-ray uh, uh, cloud, and uh, so many so this is, um, many customers are using that as well. Uh, in terms of new cloud integrations, I want to mention one uh, new integration that you. Probably mentioned for majority of you, it's not interesting yet, but just wanted to mention that we recently uh, created a partnership with a company, Umnitsa. Uh, so they are making, uh, they have an uh, asset management solution or enterprise technology management solution, something similar to Insight, uh, what is now part of uh, Jira Service Management. But uh, yeah, he, and then we created this integration that we, this guy could be used to analyze uh, uh, assets in uh, Umnitsa. So if in case, if anyone you know, of you have uh, is or were planning to use uh, Umnitsa application, uh, there is an guy integration with that as well. And then uh, also one additional thing, which was not yet available in the cloud, but was available in the server and data center, was a user statistics feature. And now we have enabled that for the cloud as well. But in uh, your site settings, you can enable uh, usage statistics. And uh, as a result, you will get to the uh, usage statistics account and see uh, the same usage statistics also for your cloud site. So my colleague, Janis, Bajan will tell about that later in his presentation as well. And so now uh, I wanted to, to cover also several upcoming features which are already in final, uh, being finalized and will be available soon in the cloud and also in the server versions. Uh, and there I wanted to uh, uh, mention our guiding principle when we are developing EZPI that we want to make simple things easy but complex things still possible. But when improving EZBI, we try to make some of the previous possible things, which were quite complex, to make them simpler and easier. And the, these next things were actually which we mentioned already in last year in our community day presentation that we are working on them. So now we sometimes to make some complex things simpler and easier. So it, take some long and complex time from our side, but when we release that, we want to, uh, that it is uh, working well. And uh, yeah, so one thing is that we are improving the uh, source column mapping uh, when you are doing custom data imports uh, with, from REST APIs, SQLs, and files. 
Uh, so there will be possibility to uh, either if you have some source data, it will be easier to clone some columns and do some different mappings for one for one column uh, in different ways, as well as uh, add some uh, calculated uh, columns based on uh, other values. So previously, it was possible to write some custom JavaScript codes, which generates all of that. So now it will be easier to do it uh, via uh, user interface. And the other thing is similar thing was a custom field uh, advanced settings when doing Jira import. Previously, it was possible to in your global advanced settings for the whole system to describe them in using uh, this uh, advanced settings text based interface to change some data types, change uh, specify some multi value dimensions, or write some custom JavaScript code. So now it will be uh, improved and better, but now it will be possible to, uh, in your specific Jira import screen, if you want to modify how a particular custom field is imported into EasyBI, you can edit uh, these custom field settings and where in the user interface, we provide uh, customization of all the basic settings like display name or data type or specify that it should be multi value selection as well as uh, if you just want to pre-calculate some new custom field just in ECPI you will be able to add from the Jira import uh, screen new calculated field where you can specify what to, uh, these names data types and then, you know, well, still, if it will be some calculated field, you need to specify some JavaScript snippet, which uh, will calculate it from the other issue fields. But uh, uh, right from here, you can test it with some sample issue to validate that it is calculating what you would need. And this also enables that this could be done by the user who is uh, doing the data import in a particular Jira, uh, in particular ECDI account, shouldn't be system admin as previously. And uh, testing these uh, uh, custom JavaScript code was much harder fix. Uh, also, uh, when uh, uh, regarding new uh, integrations, uh, we are uh, improving DevOps. Uh, uh, metrics import from Jenkins. So as uh, previously we had uh, on the server a uh, solution that you can import the standard DevOps metrics from uh, uh, Bitbucket and from Bamboo. Now, if instead of Bamboo, you are using Jenkins, so there will be possible to specify your Jenkins connection and uh, get these uh, same uh, DevOps metrics regarding um, the build times, the deployment times uh, into EasyBI. Uh, then uh, several, uh, uh, some final uh, improvements, uh, new features that we are working on is uh, uh, dashboard email subscriptions. One of the uh, recent uh, frequently asked uh, features was that to enable administrators to administer email dashboard email subscriptions for other users. So now we are adding that admins will be able to manage these other user subscriptions, as well as we uh, will add that you can subscribe the whole Jira user group to uh, some dashboard email. So, and so you can put some users who would like to receive some regular dashboard uh, dashboards in their emails, uh, all of them will receive that. Uh, then uh, one of the uh, last uh, things, uh, which is uh, in early development, but will be available soon, uh, is some new type of functionality is about conditional alerts. So we, uh, we are uh, building uh, uh, the possibility that when you are uh, specifying conditional table or chart formatting, uh, you, you could specify that you want something to be red or yellow or, or green, for example. But then uh, you probably also are interested, well, if that changes from green to yellow, I want to be notified. And the feature that we are developing is that you will be able to specify that in this report, you can unmark that 
when uh, this value is has changed to this uh, condition, so goes to yellow or uh, red, or if it goes away from yellow or red uh, and becomes green again, I want to be notified. And uh, that's what the, uh, using this uh, checkbox. And then, uh, so if this particular cell moves to the red or moves away from the red after the date import, and when the values have, might change, uh, there would be an email. So it would be if, uh, possible that you subscribe to this conditional alert and you would receive in the email notification now after the new data have arrived. So this value would change and, uh, and, and with a link back to the corresponding report and you would check the details. So, uh, and so to now finalize, uh, as uh, I wanted also to say a couple of words about uh, our cloud platform uh, and uh, so how we are improving that. And as I mentioned, that we are developing all the new features in the cloud, and uh, we uh, our cloud growth is currently much faster than uh, our server and data center growth. But uh, as I mentioned, we support all your deployments and we support all, any migrations. And so if you are still on servers, so we support either your migration to data center, and there you probably may already know and have used our database migrator tool, which could be used to migrate from one server to different server or to data center, uh, all your ECBI configuration together with all defined reports. As well as uh, the same database migrator tool can be used to migrate your server or data center ECBI configuration and reports to selected cloud site. So if you have started cloud migration, and uh, this could be done also in an iterative way, you can just migrate one account, test it out, migrate a different account, and then uh, uh, migrate either to one or different cloud sites. As well as uh, we uh, recently added uh, cloud to cloud ECBI migration. Uh, for example, if you have production cloud site and sandbox cloud site, you can in the same way migrate your uh, ECBI configuration and reports back and forth different uh, cloud instances. And uh, finally, uh, uh, we are also uh, working uh, all, all the time on improving our cloud security and compliance. And uh, in the last year, so we are uh, one of the first participants in the new Atlassian Cloud Fortified program, uh, program uh, which defined their higher requirements for uh, availability, security, uh, including uh, that you should participate in the bug bounty programs. We are participating in two different bug bounty programs where the hackers are all the time trying to find some easy guy vulnerabilities. So during the last year, so there hasn't been any critical vulnerabilities. So we have been, um, but yeah, any also uh, major minor things that we are uh, monitoring that and improving that. And finally, so to improve your confidence in our cloud, uh, we have uh, recently started our SOC 2 uh, compliance implementation. So we have selected the provider, Drata, where we will uh, collect all our uh, com compliance information. And so we plan that by the end of this year, so we will uh, complete uh, the implementation and the audit uh, for that. And so that will provide you uh, both improve our internal policies as well as provide for our customers uh, uh, higher confidence in our cloud. Uh, 